The date is January 17, 2016. The world is in the middle of another stock market crash. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about this principle and actually tell you a little bit more about investments, stock analysis, and specifically uh, stock market crash and whether you should be panicking and selling your stocks or doing something different. Welcome to What The Math. This is going to be another investment video related to math. <laughs> And so let's actually talk a little bit about uh, stocks and uh, what basically happens, how they crash, what, what happens when they crash, and whether you should be doing anything when it happens. Uh, specifically, we're actually talking about what has been in the news for the past few weeks, where you know China or Chinese stocks are not doing so well. Uh, Chinese economy is struggling and because of this the American stocks have also lost a, a bit of their value and crashed here I'm gonna show you what it looks like actually and this right here is the so-called S&P 500 index which is basically the uh, 500 most uh, the biggest and the strongest companies in the US and this is what it looks like so this is for the past month or so it has lost um, uh, at least 2% possibly even more if we go uh, nope, 2%. Okay, well, that, that's good enough. So it went from about 2000 something to about 1800 something. And so yes, uh, the market you could say has crashed. Now this happened uh, um, about four months ago, specifically 15 to 16 weeks ago, when um, another news from China actually caused this to crash even more. And I'm going to show you what this looks like. Let's go to one year. So um, there we go. So in, on around August, late August, it went from about 2,100 to approximately 1816. So basically, it lost about 10% on that one uh, one day or two days. And actually, I just realized 2% is actually just from today. Today, it lost this much. Uh, overall, it lost about 10% again. So this was a t second 10% drop. Now, what is happening here? Why is it happening? Well, this is what we call a panic. This is a panic sell when people just start freaking out. They, they don't really know what happens or what's happening in the world and they start selling their stocks trying to recover some of their money. Is it a good thing to do? Well, maybe, but I think not. And I'm going to show you in a second why. We, let's actually analyze the history of stock market crashes for the past uh, 25, 30 years, 26 years specifically. Um, I found this really cool article from the Bloomberg, which is the um, financial ana analysis um, uh, magazine, which shows you the um, S&P 500 drops when they occurred and what happens um, when it basically after after the S&P 500 drops by about 5% or more. Now the first such drop occurred in 1980 and this was I don't really actually know what that happened in 1980. I was trying to find out if there was something like a big um, market crash or something else in the world, but uh, there seems to be have not not been really anything important going on, or the possibly there was something that, that I missed. I actually I wasn't even born back then, so I don't know. But anyway, so on that date, um, it lost about six percent. Then within a week, it lost another 1.3 uh, percent. Then within four weeks, it lost four more percent. And then in the next four months, it recovered 4%. So as you can see, uh, even though it lost initially, it did recover at some point. Uh, in 86, something similar occurred, but then it actually recovered within the next uh, few weeks. Now, this is the big one. 1987, this is the so-called Black Monday there. This was a very, very big market crash. It was actually where many people panicked. A lot of people actually committed suicide because they lost so much money. Uh, but uh, you notice that there's actually several... Um, weekly crashes. Now let's actually. Uh, well, first let's let's look at it here. So uh, this here it lost a lot. This here lost a lot as well. And then here it actually started recovering after about um, something like three weeks. Now this all of this happened within a month. Uh, and then here it recovered almost completely, or actually quite a lot. Um, and this was within maybe two months after the initial crash. Now let's actually look at this in a graph. And this was. Uh, 1987 so here we go it, it's almost invisible you can actually see that it kind of it was like at 200 maybe 300 and then suddenly went down to about 240 and then look at that within a year it actually recovered now this is really interesting within a year not even the uh, less than a year it recovered almost completely now here we go so you can kind of see it here it's very very hard to see because it's so tiny because this was so many years ago but uh, uh, right before the crash, it was somewhere around maybe 330, then it went down to about uh, 240, so it lost quite a lot, and then over the next year or so, it actually recovered quite a lot, and by 19... 
90, I think, within a few years, it actually overtook again and uh, recovered completely. So this is really interesting because even though uh, here it's a lot of red and it does seem re really scary, within the next few years it actually recovered completely. And you'll notice that every time this happens, so you lose 5 or so percent on one day, but then it actually recovers on the next day, or within the next week, that is. Um, and normally within at least four weeks the market uh, actually recovers completely and even overtakes even overtakes what the previous value uh, so all of this actually is really 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 interesting because if you notice all of these are i mean mostly there's actually green and specifically here 70 percent of the time market actually completely re recovered and at least 50 percent of the time it actually overtook the previous value within the next four to 12 weeks now the biggest market crash was actually in 2000, you may have seen this on a graph previously. So right here in the year 2000, this is the so-called um, dot-com crash, when um, a lot of um, people started opening up websites, a lot of people started to invest into online businesses, and then suddenly this was a big bubble that just popped and took all the money with it. Now this took a while to recover from, even though it doesn't seem like there was a lot of red here, this was actually quite a lot of red simply on these days. So you notice that it crashed, recovered, crashed, recovered, crashed, recovered. Now, this is what it looked like in real life. So on March uh, 24th, 2000, the S&P 500 was about $1,500. Then within something like two years, well, actually, let's go here. Within one year, it lost approximately, what is this, like... 30%, I think it was around 30%, and by the year 2002, it essentially halved, it lost 50% of its value. So this was a very, very large crash, it took a while for it to recover, as a matter of fact, it didn't recover, or it didn't reach this, this point again, until the year 2007. So this was actually one of the biggest crashes that I've ever seen, even though it wasn't really as um, highly advertised, or as thoroughly explored as the Black Monday or um, the crash of uh, 2008, which happened uh, about seven years ago. So uh, so let's keep going. So this is the 2008 crash. This is basically when there was a huge crisis due to um, a lot of the mortgages in the US not really being met uh, or not being paid. And there was a huge um, real estate uh, led crash. And basically this was uh, um, uh, one of the biggest crashes in recent history. And it really took US by the storm. You notice that all of this is 2008. And even though uh, on weekly basis it actually recovered quite well, um, it did lose quite a lot of value um, over time. And so this was the 2007-2008 crash, it went from about 1500 again down to about 680 uh, within a period of about a year and a half. Now, this was a crash that uh, many of you have possibly lived through and still remember. And this was actually a pretty scary time to be because uh, in US at least, uh, you know, the unemployment skyrocketed. It was the same in my home country of Canada. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it still started to recover right after, and within about, um, what is this, maybe three, four years, it uh, did kind of reach the same value. Now, notice how it skyrockets again. This is when people, um, this is what, what's called as the um, overconfidence period, or I guess you could call it period of enthusiasm and period of bull market when suddenly everyone buys stocks. And for something like five years, or close to six years, people were just buying stocks, they were investing into different things because... You know, they've lived through this part and they thought that maybe we'll now make some money. And of course, this uh, particular market crash that happened in 2015 to 2016 was kind of expected. So you'll notice there's actually a trend. It goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. Now, is it going to go down a lot? Mm, very, very unlikely. And the reason for this is because the biggest part has already actually occurred. And even though uh, it doesn't really seem like a lot here, let me just switch to five years. So here we go. Um, the biggest part was actually right here. This was the biggest crash. And um, it did decrease a lot, but then it suddenly bounced back. Now, it, it uh, in the last few weeks, it actually dropped again. But it's very likely that th what you see right here is actually this part. It's the um, after effect in the next 12 weeks. Now, sometimes, and specifically here, 30% of the times, it does go down a lot. But sometimes, and usually, it goes up. You'll notice that it actually goes up within the next 12 weeks. So we are now in this period after the first crash. This is the next 12 weeks. And it's very likely that it's probably going to, you know, stop somewhere here and then kind of start recovering. So it's very likely that right after this uh, initial crash uh, sort of stops, it will start going up again. 
Now, whether this bounce back happens again, this all depends on China and how they regulate their stocks. And this is, of course, due to the uh, sudden decrease in Chinese economy and sudden crashes on the Chinese market. But it's very likely that it will once again start becoming more optimistic and start going up and up and up. And this is essentially how stock market works. It always, always goes up and down. This is essentially the model of the stock market. Now, this, this part is because some people don't realize that. Some people actually still panic and they still sell. However, this part is because some people, people that actually know about the, the fact that people will sell off and, you know, they'll actually panic and they'll try to sell their stocks. This, this recovery is because some people are smart enough to save some cash and buy more of the stocks when people start panicking and selling them off. And this is actually the principle that Warren Buffett teaches in his books as well. He basically says, you know, when people are panicking, you should be buying. When people are, are buying, you should be selling. And um, I mean, that's how he made billions of dollars. And so right here and right here is the time for you to basically invest into, into S&P 500, the most trusted index of stocks in the world. And um, essentially wait for it to get really optimistic and really high. And when it gets really, really high, just maybe use your intuition and sell and just wait for it to crash again. So, because this pattern will never change. It will always be going up and down. As a matter of fact, if I were to go into max and if I were, if we were actually to zoom in on some of these, it's kind of hard to see here, but if we were to zoom in, you would notice the same pattern. It just, it's it does increase with time and it will become uh, more wavy and more uh, pronounced as, as we keep going into the future. Now, before we finish, let's actually take a look at the last part here. And this is, so this is the last crash. Notice how there's nothing between 2011 and 20, 2015. But so we, uh, this was the time of um, optimism and enthusiasm in buying stocks. And suddenly we have this new crash. Now, what, what happens here? So what, what are these values now? We can actually take a look at this. So uh, it, on the first day in, uh, what was this, August 21st, it lost 6%. Then uh, within one week, it actually recovered something about, uh, I would say, maybe five to six percent. Then within one week, it actually recovered a little bit. You'll notice that it went up a little bit. So this is a recovery of about maybe three percent, maybe four percent. So right here it actually was green. And then what, what happened in the next four weeks? Yeah, next week, four weeks. In the next four weeks. And here we're talking about the period from September to October. Uh, it actually kind of dropped again. So there's another drop right here. But then it started recovering. So by the by the fourth week, it actually, and this is of course between September and I guess October. Here we go, October seventh. Uh, you notice how it actually regained a little bit of its value, and then when it, within the next twelve weeks, it actually once again recovered. Uh, almost everything. It still lost a little bit, but it recovered almost everything. And then we actually got another another one of these crashes. And so the same pattern will repeat itself. It will probably recover, then drop a little bit, then recover. And uh, eventually it should start going up again. As people become uh, less panicky and more confident in the stock market, it will most likely start going up again. And now, if you want to check out this article, I'm posting the link for this article in the description below. Uh, it's actually from, uh, it was written, I think, in August. Yeah, August 24th, 2015. So I actually wanted to wait before I make this video. I wanted to see what happens to the stock market in the next, um, basically, five months after this article was written. And it was just as I thought. It, it, basically, exactly what I expected actually did occur. Anyway, so um, hopefully this kind of made it clear for you that you really shouldn't be panicking, that this is a natural occurrence, that things will st stabilize you shouldn't be selling your house and basically always you know keep some cash in the reserve so you can buy stocks when they're really low and sell them when they're really high and that's really it that's all i wanted to talk about in this particular video and hopefully you learn a little bit more about the mathematics and the financial ideas uh, behind stock market investments and now you can become a more wise and smarter investor thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video and as always game you later and bye bye